Hello and welcome to another video. Today I will be reviewing the Kellant Combat S500 3D DLP printer from AliExpress.com. This printer cost me around $1,150 that included buyer protection and shipping. But the print volume is 215 millimeters by 135 millimeters by 180. Those dimensions in inches are 8.4 by 5.3 by 7 on the z-axis so uh, not bad if you're looking for a larger print volume however keep in mind the resolution is sacrificed by little more resin means more of a mess so I will leave the link in the description if you are interested in buying this 3d printer the software that this printer uses is called nano DLP it's basically online. You don't get an actual software package with this printer. It runs off of a Raspberry Pi. So what you need to do is actually log into your router and you need to configure your Wi-Fi to be able to access Nano DLP. So I will switch over to Nano DLP. And this is what you will see for the first time loading Nano DLP. The first step is to connect your printer. After assembly, connect the printer, connect the power, and turn it on. Make sure to plug in an Ethernet cord on the back so that we can set up the Wi Fi for the first time. So when you find your system's router, IP address. Up here at the top right it will say Wi-Fi setup and that's where you click to set up Wi-Fi and set all your details and from there it should connect to the Wi-Fi. You don't need to have the Ethernet cord plugged in anymore. So right now my printer is idle. That means I have it over there in my backyard just turned on, no nothing printing. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to actually load up a part that I want to print. And this is basically going to be the A to Z process of how I set up a print. And I will show how to print and do a little mini review on the printer. And then the post process of washing the part in alcohol and rinsing it and then letting it out to dry. So Nano DLP at first can be a little bit confusing. We'll take a look at the plates and my profile that I've been using for this, uh, this printer. I've only tried two resins on it, the white default profile resin that came with it and then this other one that I purchased. So I'm gonna click on the plates tab and this is where I have all of my plates so basically what I'm printing you will see here that um, your file name will appear here and it just depends what you're printing and the profile so the profile will say here I have named mine blue resin but there could be other profiles and that'll show up here so if I go to add and then browse and then I can look up a STL file that I want to print. Since I already have some loaded, let's just take a look at these. So once you load it up, you'll get this screen and uh, you can select print from start. It'll send it to the printer and it'll start printing. I'm just gonna click the edit tab actually the layers tab to show you how it looks like in nano DLP so uh, this is layer by layer, layer preview of how it's actually gonna print and this is uh, printed at an angle that's why it's not probably not gonna make much sense to you but this was um this was a Batman fidget spinner this was a star shade fidget spinner and this was just some other figurine uh, but here it'll show you the 
display and the layer by layer display. So going back to plates, um, the add support with 3D editor is where you actually add support. So at first nano DLP, you think you're doing something correct and then it kind of shifts on you. You got to do it again in case you mess up. It's really tedious. Uh, honestly, I'm not too fond of using nano DLP if I could use another software. Um, which you could just bring in an STL file ready to go. But I like to add support here. Uh, makes it so much easier. So we'll come back to plates in a minute. I'm going to go to resin profile and look at the profile settings that I have. So here is my original white resin 500 grams that came with the printer itself. So this is the profile for the white resin. And this is the one that I've been using. I've been using a clear blue resin from Nano Nova Systems actually. And uh, let's take a look at some of these. I'm not too sure yet how to calculate the resin price per liter. Again, I've only used this printer very few times. But um, what you need to pay attention to is right here. So the number of layers, burn-in layers, is 20. So the first 20 layers, they're going to be very strong layers so that it could adhere to the bill plate. The layer thickness, if we click the little question mark, is basically the z-axis resolution. I just left it at 50. The cure time, 5 seconds. It's not 50 seconds. Uh, wait before print, it's 2 seconds. Uh, wait after print, 0. Lift after print. So this option right here is important because after you burn a layer, it'll lift for a short distance and then go back down. And it's usually going to wait like 2 seconds after it lifts. So this is the distance it lifts and then this is how long it's going to wait. So it just lifts and drops basically. Uh, normal layer 60, cure time 7. So you want to give it plenty of time to cure. And uh, I just copied basically the same setting. So it will lift and then go back down instantly instead of waiting two seconds like when you're doing the burn-in layers. So if that didn't make sense, the burn-in layers are the first 20 hardcore burn-in layers, powerful burn-in layers so that it could adhere to the plate and the rest are regular layers that it just uses to constantly go down and up just printing and it doesn't, uh, the strength of this, these layers is not that strong I guess I hope that made sense but um, that's a, really all you need to do for now is just worry about those uh, I'm not even sure how to use these these other ones because I'm an amateur at this too so those are my profile settings for this clear blue resin but I do get decent prints with these settings no issues at all